War Thunder. It's a terrible game, and everybody loves it. However, one of the difficulties with it is it's pretty complicated sometimes. Welcome back everybody. Uh, today's going to be a slightly different kind of video. Today I'm going to do a beginner's guide. And when I say beginner's guide, I mean as in like assuming that you saw an ad and thought this game looks cool, I'm going to go fly an F-16. Well, I'm going to be frank with you. I've been playing for almost a year now, good luck with that. But, being slightly less pessimistic, I'd just like to say I had the idea of doing this because I've got some friends who want to get into War Thunder and it is, as I said, a very complex game. Now, this video isn't scripted so I apologise for any, um, uh, unnecessary pauses. But today I'm just going to go through everything that there is in the hangar and then in the next couple videos I'll look at some basic ground and air uh, techniques and tactics and things that will help you. Bearing in mind as I said I've been playing coming up a year however I feel like I've, yeah, I feel like I've got enough knowledge to do a basic tutorial however if you want to be in depth I would recommend going and watching t tutorials from guys like Defen or Odd Boars or Fly Daily. All of those guys have been playing for ages and have a much better idea. However, I do mostly know how most of these systems work. If you are watching this and you're just watching because you're a subscriber or because you've seen some of my other stuff and you know how to play, you probably go find this incredibly boring. But for those of you who have absolutely no clue what this game is, this is for you. So, to start off with, one of the most important things that is kind of overlooked is the replays up here in the top left. Here you'll see a list of all the different files from different games that you've played and you can actually go back and watch it from the point of view of any other, of any person in the game. So let's go to, where's an air one? And a second, as I said, this is unscripted, so... Okay, this one will do. And you can hit view replay. It will default to your own aircraft. You can use your page up, page down here. And all that sort of jazz. Now you can actually go, and I can pause and say, this P51. Okay. Here we go. Uh, replays can be a bit buggy. But anyway, as I said, if there's a dogfight and you just have absolutely no clue how you lost it, you can come back to replays and watch it over again. Okay, moving along. Squadrons. I am part of the RNZA squadron, because I mean, anyway. However, you can search all kinds, you can search every squadron in the game, you can apply to join them. I would recommend joining a squadron, because that way you get access to squadron vehicles. Um, that also means Generally, people are more willing to play with a random person if it is someone from their squadron. Uh, if you go on to the squadron, you can see activity is the number of squadron points you get towards a squadron vehicle. So I'm currently researching the Hunter F-58. So at the end of every three-day period, based on my activity and the number of research points I've earned, I will get a certain number of squadron points which will go towards that. And once that's fully researched, I can buy it from down over here. And where's the hunter? Once it's researched, instead of saying or 
to, it'll say, oh no, it does normally say order, sorry. But anyway, yeah, it'll say order, and then you can purchase it for silver lands, or you can purchase these ones for golden eagles, but I'll get to that in a second. Next up is your player card. Oh, I got a new title. I didn't even see that. Um, you can see medals for various achievements that you get. Service record, handy for seeing what, how well you're doing in certain vehicles. Quite helpful in Air I'd be particularly because if you if there's one guy left, you can have a look. If you know what kind of plane he's, if you know what plane he's in, you can see how good he is, how likely he is to be spaded, etc. Medals just there to make you feel good. Achievements, same thing. Don't spend money on these; worthless. Skins, you can see all the skins that you've got for various things. You can go only for the purchased ones. Decals, list of all the decals you've got. Okay. Next, the various game modes. <clears throat> You've got arcade modes where things are simpler. In the case of ground arcade and naval arcade, names show up, and in ground arcade you get a little cross here. However, I, I don't tend to play arcade battles just because now that I've gotten the hang of realistic, I find it easier. Air realistic, similar to air arcade, but more detailed flight models, and you don't get a lead indicator. Ground and naval realistic, naval realistic, you don't get an extra crosshair to show where the round's going to land. Naval's basically the same thing, just you don't have any, it's, naval's pretty much the same as arcade, just you don't get uh, name tags on them. Ground realistic, you don't get name tags, and there's some um, and a whole bunch of other stuff, which probably doesn't, probably isn't, could be relevant for a beginner. Next you've got silver lands, these are the main currency of the game, you can buy them for GE or you can earn them. Golden Eagles, they're the premium currency that you spend your money on, this is where Gaijin uh, gets their food for the snail. GE can be bought, used to buy premium account time, or you can buy the battle pass, you can convert convertible research points however from what I've heard it's not very efficient to do that it's much better to get premium time however if you've got like two golden eagles left you might as well I guess um shop there's an encyclopedia here which uh, helps you see a whole bunch of stuff that I'm sort of saying now history pages battle pass challenges for the battle pass here you can see your inventory all the stuff that you've got, like boosters and wages and orders and backups. Here you can select which country you're looking at. If you hit the research tab you can see at the moment it's on aviation so I can see all the aircraft that I can research. I could click on army, helicopters. Now, when you first get, when you first start the game so I was wanting to start USSR for tanks. I would have by default two vehicles, you can put them in both crew slots. However, if you want to be able to also have aircraft, you can recruit crew. That goes 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 is sell and that starts costing GE, as you can see. Um, what else? Oh yes. For aircraft, I would recommend, if, unless you're going to pay GE for more than five crews, you're probably only going to want one aircraft per game if you're playing ground realistic battles, so just put them all in the same one. That way the crew points stack up quicker, that way you can upgrade your crews, upgrade the G-tolerance, stamina, etc. You can also buy more crew points for GE, as you see here. So, as I was saying, in order to get a new vehicle, you must first research it. In order to research it, you see, you click research, and then every game you get a certain number of research points, they go towards the vehicle that you've put researched on. Tanks are required to research tanks, aircraft are required to research aircraft, etc. And then, once you've finished researching it, 
it will be available for a certain number of silver lions. You can then buy it and then click, say, this one's now a crew. You can hit choose a crew. You can choose a crew for silver lions, or I can hit choose a crew there because it's already in there, but I'm not going to do that. And that should be about everything within the hangar. Oh yes, modifications. Now, if your plans come, what is known as stock basically means that they deliberately made slightly bad, and this is partially a Gaijin thing to make you despair at how terrible your thing is, is purchase it for Golden Eagles. However, you can also hit research a certain unit, and then when you finish a game, say a game of RRB, you get a certain number of research points. It's split to a certain degree, I'm not sure what it is, and some of the research points go to the vehicle that you're researching and some of them go to a module so you can uh, research weapons bouts which means that you can choose what type of um, rounds you're firing uh, you can research the new guns which makes them less likely to jam you've also got airframe and cover which improves speed and flight performance and main the main difference aside from the belts is the engine upgrades have the biggest difference and you can also purchase backup vehicles you don't necessarily need them I've got tons just from uh, logging in daily logins etc battle pass you can also purchase a talisman which doubles the number of research points that you get for a certain vehicle as you can see here you have various kinds of Premium vehicles, they double your research points that you'd normally get because they all come with a talisman. They generally have, they double the silver lions. Now I'm going to have to do some editing, but if you look at, say, this P40E1, you can see it's got brackets and some numbers before the brackets. The numbers within the brackets are generally 100%, and then they'll say plus something and show the booster as you can see I've got a 10% research point booster on so there's one there and then the talisman adds another 100% within those brackets and then the number outside the brackets is the multiplier a high multiplier is good and it will depend on the aircraft or tank or whatever that you're looking at and with that that should be everything that I can think of that you would want to know if there is any other questions that you may have, please leave them in the comments. If you are an experienced player watching this and there is anything that I've missed, please leave that also in the comments. I will try and leave anything important that I've left out in the description or in a pinned comment. And with that, that is all. The next one should come out in a couple weeks time. I will still be doing gameplay videos and dogfight videos for those of you who aren't interested in learning how to play the game again. And that is all. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.